Hello everyone, my name is Roy, and in today's recording I'll be showing how you can create a mock GraphQL API using Stepsend. Let's suppose you're building a new API for your project, but you're not really sure where the data is coming from, or maybe you don't even know what data you will be returning. In this scenario, you maybe want to set up a mock API. For this, I'll be using a new VS Code project in which I've set up some configuration files for Stepsend, and in this file, we'll be using a mock GraphQL API based on a REST API. So later on, we'll be uh, changing the schema for this mock GraphQL API with an actual data source. So we'll be implementing a mock API that later on will return the data for a REST API. For this, I've set up some configuration files and my new schema will be written in the file mocks.graphql. In here, we can type uh, create a type, so we can type create a type called customer. In example, uh, we can say this customer will have an ID with type ID. It will, well, let's make this uppercase. No. It will have a name, which is a string. And it will also have an email, which is also a string. So this will be the type that we will be returning. Of course, we will need to write a query. So we can type query. And we can say get customers or maybe get all customers because that's what we'll be doing. And we're going to be saying this returns type customer. And as I said before, we'll be mocking a REST API. So we can use at REST. Uh, we don't need these configuration setups. We don't need a result route. And if I would be formatting this. So if I would try running this, it will actually get an error because we haven't provided a endpoint. But instead, we'll be mocking this data. So what we'll be doing, we'll be adding a custom directive called at mock. And just save this. And then what I need to do here is run steps and start, which will deploy this new GraphQL API to steps and cloud. Yes, so it will take GraphQL API, it returns it on this localhost endpoint, which if I press enter here, it should bring me to the graphical ID in which I can find uh, my new schema. So I'll be going to docs, I can see if a query called get all customers. So let's try this one out. My email ID name, let's run it. You can see it has mock data for me. If I zoom in a little, you can see it returns me a list of customers with an email, which is not actually an email, it's just a string, an ID, which is an ID, and a name, which is also a string. So what Stepsend does, it will take the, uh, the type of the field and just create a mock value for it. Of course, this is something we can make look prettier. So let's say we do, uh, we add something else. It's called add mock function which is a custom directive that gives you control over the mocked value steps and generates for you. So let's do mock fn, uh, let's say name is maybe first name. So when I do this, I press enter, uh, steps will actually deploy it. Let me see, we get an error, name, first name. Maybe we need to append something else here. Let me have a quick look. We need a uppercase N. So this will be deployed to Stepsense Cloud again. And then if I would be going back to my graphical interface and I rerun this query, it will actually generate a name for me, which is a first name. I can do the same for email. So if I would copy paste this, put it here. I can say this should be an email. Of course, redeploy it. And then as soon as I refresh this, you can see my mock data is way nicer. It has an email, which is actually an email. It has an ID, which is of course an ID. And then it has a human readable name, which is quite cool. Of course, it doesn't really matter if I would be doing this. I could also use it with a DB query. Um, so let's say maybe this is our case. It should still work. And this would need more, it needs a type, of course, just try and save it. 
and then if I would run enter, it would still uh, create generated mock data for me. So I can use this when I try to mock a REST API, a database, uh, which is Postgres, MySQL, maybe even NoSQL databases. But also if I want to query a, uh, I want to create a GraphQL a mock API for another GraphQL API. So this would all work. Let's go back to REST. Oh, sorry, initial end case. So we now have a mock API that mocks uh, customer data for us. Uh, we can mock even more. So we can also say, let's create a relation here. So maybe we would have a type called address, which has like a street, maybe a string. It's like a country, also a string. It maybe has a zip code, which is also a string. And then maybe we also need a city. So this is another mock type. Of course, we would shoot at uh, mock here. And then we need to create a relationship. So we can say this has a relationship with address, an address like this. And then this is a lowercase. So formatting, saving, and then this will be deployed to steps in again. So if I wait for the deployment to finish. I go back to graphical ID. Let's say refresh it and see what other fields we can now query. So if I go to Explorer, I can see I also have an address field. So I can get a city, country, street, zip code. And of course it will generate mock data for me. And as we saw before, we need to make this look a bit prettier. And therefore let's have a look at the documentation because in the documentation on stepsend.com slash docs, you can find all the values you can use for mock data. So we see we have a city, a country, um, a zip code. These all come in handy probably. So let's take these ones. That's so street. We don't have a value for it, but we have one for country. So let's do mock of n, do name, make it oh, name country. Okay. Let's not make typos there. Then do the same for zip code. Let's make this zip. And then the same for city. Let's make this a city. To use the uppercase here, because, well, step sum will give us an error if we use the incorrect values. So let's do city and save it again. Now my deployment should be working all fine. Yes, which is great. I go back to the graphical interface. If I press run now, you can see we have a city, a country, and a zip code. Well, of course, it's mock data, so it's not really... Well, I shouldn't expect the city Rakeside to be in Azerbaijan with the zip code 36004, but you never know. And then there's one other thing I want to show, which you can also do. So let's say street. So we don't really have a mock value for street, but what you can do is actually provide a list. So we can say name is list. And then add another value called values, which we can see street one, street two. So if I press run, Sepson will actually take one of these values and use it as a mocked value for our mock GraphQL API. If I press one here, you can see we have street one. And of course I can change all these values into something else. And as I told you before, later on, if your API is actually ready, so let's suppose you have a graph, you have a REST API that you want to connect to it that has all these different fields. Uh, so let's say I've developed this REST API. It has information for customers. You can see we have an address with a city. Uh, we have some of the other fields there, a city here again, email, name, so let's try and append this REST API to my GraphQL API built in Stepsend. So I press enter there. I need to get rid of all the mock values. I can delete mock. Let's get rid of this one, this one as well. Delete it, yes. And then finally delete these last two. Okay. So my REST API is ready. My backend team is done in development, or maybe I found the REST API that has all the data I need. And then the only thing I need to do is change the endpoint value in the address customer direct, custom directive. 
and just save this and steps and will deploy it to the cloud for you. So I would now be going back to my graphical interface. The only thing I need to do is press run and it will take actual customer data from the REST API instead of the mocked values we've created in Stepsend, which is a great improvement, but it also helps you, of course, because you no longer need to have a REST API before building your GraphQL API. Instead, you can just build your GraphQL API, do the front-end interactions, or wherever you want to do these client-side interactions, and then connect the REST API later. So with that, I'd like to end. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and also follow us on Twitter in case you have any other questions. You can find all useful links in the description of this video. So I hope to see you somewhere soon again. Bye bye.